Hi, this is Risa and welcome back to my Stitch Along series. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Your support means a lot to me. It keeps me wanting to embroider more and upload more videos. In this video, I'm going to share the free pattern and process of my architectural embroidery of the Ponte de Sospiri in Venice, which you can download by clicking on the link in the description below. Now, I used cork material for the first time and I'm really excited to walk you through my experience stitching this material. So cork fabric is essentially cork applied on a sheet of cotton and it has a smooth soft feel to it. What I like about it is that it's organic and there are no harsh chemicals that have been used to produce this material. Now because it's opaque I had to first print the pattern on an A4 sheet of what's called sticky Fabri Solvi, which is a self-adhesive water-soluble fabric. So let me show you how to print it once you download the pattern. What you need is an inkjet printer and make sure you place the cloth side of that sheet of paper facing yourself before you print. And then essentially you go onto your phone or your computer to print the pattern on the Fabri Solvi, which you will then stick on to the cork fabric. I'm going to use DMC threads for this particular pattern using black mainly for the architecture and the colored threads for highlights for these buildings at the back and for the boat. Now, had I worked on white fabric, I may have also used a little bit of watercolor for the sky and for the water. I'm cutting around the pattern here so that I can easily place the pattern on the cork fabric here. And I'm going to use an 8 inch hoop, which I think is a good size. And I'm going to paste it while the hoop is still placed on the cork fabric like so. I've mounted the fabric with some difficulty as this is kind of a stiff cork fabric kind of feels more like stiff canvas and I noticed that when I stretch the canvas there are a few cracks here but I'm going to use a smaller frame so those little cracks will be outside of that frame so I won't see it um, however I did notice that when you do remove the hoop you don't really see those cracks any longer so I'm gonna just cut around the hoop here to make it easier to mount it on an embroidery stand and to start stitching. I'm going to use really fine needles here that I've used for thread painting. These are really fine needles and I noticed they work well on cork fabric without damaging the material with tiny holes. Let's begin stitching. So I'm going to use one strand of black thread here to stitch the buildings on the left and the right here with back stitch. Um, I find that is an easier stitch to use to ensure straight lines. So you insert the needle into the fabric like so and then take a step forward a few millimeters and insert it back in the hole that you just came up through. And then to go forward you bring it through the last hole and insert it a few millimeters forward. So you keep going on in this manner until you get a nice line or outline for the building. Now the second row of lines is slightly thicker so I'm going to stitch two rows uh, with the black thread and you'll notice here that I'm inserting the needle somewhat in the middle of the last stitch, not quite at the same point where the previous uh, needle went through. So this way you avoid sort of distinct lines coming in the pattern. You can also use two strands of the black thread and that would be easier. Now I've finished the top part here and I'm going to work on the remaining outlines before I work on the details. But first I'm going to stitch the corner of the building here with back stitches and I'll try to avoid having a running commentary for the whole video uh, as the stitches are pretty much the same. I'll just come in whenever required to explain 
certain stitches like for example here I am stitching slightly diagonal stitches as you can see and this is just to give the impression of an archway going in. Now another thing you might want to do is use your thread as a ruler so you know that you're stitching in a straight line like I did just uh, moments ago. I am stitching the arches first and here's a little bit of a detail. You need to stitch really small stitches to get that curve of the archway. So as the archway gets smaller, this gets a little bit more trickier to do. Here I'm using two strands of black thread to stitch the thick outline of the building here and I'm using split stitch so essentially you bring in or you insert the needle in between the two threads. The trick to stitching curves in architectural embroidery is to stitch really small stitches as you can see here. The smaller the stitch easier to control and you can get the shape that you want. So in this case, I'm stitching the curves of the columns here. Here's another way of stitching circular elements um, in embroidery. Here I'm using two strands of thread, one as an anchor and the other as the stitching element. So you can see I'm using the anchor thread to create the circle and the second thread to essentially couch that thread into place. So this way you can get a really nice circle but also a circle that has a little architectural detail. If you actually see the picture or image of this building you'll see that these circular designs in the architecture are a little bit more complicated then one would be able to stitch them. So to give them a little bit more character, I'm using the couching method to stitch the circles. Of course, when you get to the really small one at the bottom, I'm just using a French knot. I'm going to use the couching method to stitch the arches for the arch windows here. I find that's easier to get the shape of the arch by doing it this way. So I'm using two strands of thread, one to outline the arch or the window and the other to couch it. Now the couching thread is behind the fabric so you can't see it. I bring it up only to couch that curve and you can see that with the couching you can make the thread curve at the point that you want it to. So here again I am just stitching back stitches and I'm going to show you how to couch that curve. So you bring up the needle at one end of the arch, take it down at the second end and then couch the thread at the point where you want the thread to curve. In this case I'm doing another curve for the shadow and I'm using a needle to essentially hold the thread in place and then couch it down. Once I couch it down I'll remove that needle as you can see and then you fill up that space to create the shadow and so this gives it a little bit of depth in your architectural embroidery. Now I've decided I'm just going to stitch the top arches here and you can watch carefully how I am couching it into place. So you can see that I'm taking out the needle on one end, inserting it at the point where the arch ends and then couching that thread at the center of that arch to get that nice curve. And sometimes I'm making two couching stitches to get a nice curve of that arched window.
To embroider the colorful background in the pattern, I need to think about the fact that there are buildings and there's a bridge in the foreground. Now you should be able to see the colorful buildings at the back of the bridge. So what I've decided to do is to stitch satin stitches for the walls using two strands of thread here, as you can see. And I'm gonna stitch the walls of the buildings first, and then I'm gonna stitch the bridge in parts so that I know where the pattern lines are for the bridge. If I were to stitch all of the buildings first, I wouldn't be able to see the bridge. So as soon as I finish this yellow building, I will stitch the left part of the bridge first. So now here, I am using two strands of black thread to stitch the bottom of the bridge and then I'm going to use one strand of black thread to start stitching the railings. So in this way I'm sort of connecting with the bridge pattern on the unembroidered side and I know exactly where the lines should meet.
here's the completed piece. You can see that there's an outline of the hoop on the cork fabric. Uh, anyways, I'm going to be using a smaller hoop frame, so I am not so worried about that outline. But I can see that it's a bit difficult to stretch the fabric into this frame. Uh, and since I don't know how it will behave um, when I dissolve the fabric solve in water, I'm going to actually stretch it and stitch the back of the embroidery before I put it in water. Because sometimes the fabric shrinks um, at a different rate compared to the thread that you use for embroidery. I soaked the frame and the embroidery in water for some time until the Solvi Fabri had dissolved. As you can see, it has dissolved quite well and the cork fabric is nice and taut against the frame. The threads have also not shrunken or warped as I'd hoped it would not. Um, and the back looks perfectly fine as well. You can leave it open this way. I've decided I'll use some felt backing. So I cut out a piece the size of the frame and I'm inserting it to see how it fits and whatever extra is there I'm going to mark it out with a pen by pushing it along the edges of the frame and then just snip off those extra pieces of fabric and I'm using a little bit of fabric glue here to attach that felt inside the frame. I hope my friend's gonna like the embroidery piece I've made for her as a gift. Here is a sticker that I've added that says handmade with love. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to download the free pattern from the description below and don't forget to click the subscribe, like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye bye.